Hi and welcome to Sims Racing. Driving simulators is something we are all fond of because why else would you be checking out the channel? Whether you prefer racing, rallying or just cruising about on public roads, there's a game out there which fits that bill. So in today's video I'll go over my top 5 favourite driving simulators and also tell you why I liked them so much or why I prefer them over certain others. Right, get yourself strapped in and let's get into it. Now first of all, as you can tell from the list, there are loads of them I've played over the years. However, there are some titles that I haven't been able to obtain just yet, the most notable one being BeamNG. And secondly, keep in mind that this is not a top 5 of driving simulators based on their physics model or something along those lines. So at number 5 we have Richard Burns Rally. This little gem was developed by Warthog Games and released by SCI Games in 2004. To this day, RBR is considered the king of sim rallying and is still being played by many fans including yours truly. The two main reasons for its success are in my opinion, the great physics and community modding. It's the combination of these two aspects that resulted in RBR making it onto this top 5. Having said that, if the community modding wasn't as big as it is, we might have forgotten all about RBR a long time ago. When it launched, the game just had Amiga 6 locations with 4 gravel rallies set in Great Britain, Japan, the USA and Australia, 1 snow event in Finland and 1 tarmac rally located in the French Alps. The car list wasn't very extensive either, with only 8 cars available, all of them being 4 wheel drive or all wheel drive except for 1. We had the 2003 Subaru Impreza WRC, the Mitsubishi Lancer Evo 7 WRC, Toyota Corolla WRC, the Hyundai Accent WRC, Peugeot 206 WRC, the 2000 Subaru Impreza WRC, the Citroën Zara T4 WRC and the MG ZR Super 1600. Luckily for all of us, RBR was very accessible for modders and not long after its release they went to work. Over time they added more than 100 new rally cars and stages, many of which are still amongst my favourites in any racing game. Some of my all time favourite rally cars included are the Talbot Sunbeam Lotus Group 2, the Renault Clio Super 1600, the Peugeot 207 Super 2000, the Ford Focus RS WRC from 2003-2004, nicknamed the Beast and the Hyundai i20 R5. When it comes to my favourite stages it's really difficult to select just a few. I always prefer driving on tarmac and the community provided so many of them. But if I really had to pick a couple of them, I'd go for Verkei 2010, Semeten, Gestel, Gradek and Liptikov and the German vineyard stages Sieversdorf and Bergheim. Now the modding didn't stop there. In recent years we saw improvements to the original physics model in the form of NGP or New Generation Physics, which still receives updates today. NGP has elevated RBR to a whole new level which is absolutely fantastic. And the final RBR upgrade I want to praise is the FMOD audio update. The original engine and exhaust audio weren't spectacular in any way, but what these models were able to accomplish with FMOD is absolutely astonishing. It just completely transforms the game and creates so much more immersion. Nowadays there are several ways to enjoy a modded version of RBR. You have RBR Czech, RBR Hungary, RBR Pro, RS RBR and many more. Each of these offers you everything you need including online competition. However, I'm not trying to compete online but just want to play it for fun on my own. That's why I opted for RBR CIT. It's a tool that provides you with all the NGP cars, roughly half of them having the FMOD audio update. There are a few downsides to this though. You will have to download and install the original game and modded stages yourself. Luckily for me, I still have the CD I bought in 2004 as well as all the stages I downloaded over the years on my hard drive. I'll put links in the description down below to several of those modded RBR versions and some pages where you can find amazing liveries. Feel free to check them out and perhaps consider supporting them by making a small donation for example. I know they would really appreciate that. And I'll do the same thing for the other games on the list. To wrap up number 5, let's just enjoy some modded RBR footage where I'm driving the Sieversdorf stage in a Hyundai i20 R5 because this game has truly come an incredibly long way since 2004.
At number 4 we have Assetto Corsa Competizione. For me personally this is the go to racing sim for anyone that enjoys GT racing. ACC is the official GT World Challenge and GT4 European Series game developed by Kuno Simulazioni, giving players the opportunity to drive any car and circuit which featured in those championships since 2018. However that's not all because they added content from the 2019 British GT Championship and the Intercontinental GT Challenge as well. But what makes this sim title so special for me and why do I prefer this over others? Well, first of all, I really like the officially licensed content that's on offer. I enjoy GT racing and more specifically GT4 championships. With GT3 cars, you need to be very precise and careful. Touching another car or hitting a curb too hard can have serious consequences. GT4 cars on the other hand offer you a bit more wiggle room in that department. You can be quite aggressive and get away with certain things you wouldn't be able to in a GT3. I've been in plenty of GT4 races where rubbing is racing and battles were fought out on a track very similar to this. I truly consider GT4 cars to be the modern equivalent of the touring cars of old. Absolutely brilliant to drive. Apart from the content, ACC has stunning graphics, amazing car audio, a solid tire and physics model thanks to the latest few patches, decent force feedback and quality community content in the form of online competitions and car liveries. Now there are quite a few games out there that offer you very similar content and in several cases considerably more, but all of them have their own drawbacks. Take iRacing for example, arguably the best racing sim for online competitions. It has loads of content and a competitive rating system many other developers try to mimic. However, it is mightily expensive. First of all, there's a $13 monthly subscription involved which is 10 euros 99 for the EU people watching. For that price you only get 17 cars and 22 circuits. Of those vehicles, almost all of them are beginners cars, which means no GT3s, no top of the range NASCARs, none of that. The same applies to the circuits. If you really want to compete in a full GT3 championship for example, you'll have to buy quite a bit of extra content. Each car costs $11.95 or €10.21 and each circuit will set you back the same amount or $14.99 which is €12.77 depending on the quality of the circuit. In the past I did buy a bunch of content in order to compete which set me back over €100, Euros, not including the monthly subscription. Quickly afterwards I realised that the content I bought was enough to compete in one full championship but not enough to compete in several others because I was still missing circuits. It didn't take long before I eventually cancelled my subscription. Personally, I honestly can't justify spending so much money on a game, especially considering the fact that there are plenty of alternatives available. Race Room Racing Experience, R Factor 2, Automobilista 2 and several other sim racing titles each have their own pros and cons as well. And even though ACC is fairly limited content wise compared to some of the others, none of them are able to fill that void completely, bar one. I won't tell you which game that is, but it is higher up the list, so feel free to start guessing. At number 3 we have a driving sim most likely none of you expected to see make an appearance, American Truck Simulator. It's because of this one that I had to put driving sims in the title rather than racing sims. American Truck Simulator was developed and released by SES Software in 2016. Back then they were already well versed in creating an amazing truck driving simulator as the studio is also responsible for both Euro Truck Simulator 1 and 2. I've been playing ETS 2 ever since it came out in 2012. It was completely different from any other driving sim available at the time. I was intrigued by it, but not entirely sure I would enjoy it. However, it didn't take long for me to realize how brilliant this game was and still is. Being able to drive a lorry or truck on big motorways and through cities all across Europe, for me personally, it was just a blast. You really have to follow the rules, otherwise you get fined. You need to keep to the speed limit, stop at traffic lights, use your indicators and much more. And apart from trying to keep your lorry in its lane, you also have to deal with traffic around you. What's great about this one is that the developers keep releasing new content for it to this day, expanding the map as well as the list of vehicles and features each time. When I heard that they were going to release the same type of game but set in the land of the free and home of the brave, better known as the US of A, I was rather excited. Over the years I've travelled to many places but one of the few I look back on most fondly was the road trip my brother and I did from Las Vegas to Los Angeles. 
When we went to pick up the rental, we managed to negotiate an upgrade in return for a small single extra fee. The upgrade in question was a brand new Dodge Charger RT Hemi. Now, I'm a massive fan of American muscle cars and never thought the day would ever come that I could actually drive one. Oh, and the fun I had. Every single second I sat behind the wheel of that car, I was smiling. Driving through Nevada and then California was absolute heaven. The open desert roads, the tunnels in the area of the California National Parks like Yosemite, wherever we were, the environment was perfect and the constant V8 soundtrack was even better. I could talk for hours about the road trip, but perhaps it's best to turn our attention back to the topic at hand, American Truck Simulator. Combining my enjoyment of playing ETS 2 and my love for driving through the US makes this game absolutely perfect for when I want to go for a relaxing drive in my lorry. The customization options American Truck Simulator offers are fantastic and the fact that there are plenty of community mods available as well adds an extra layer of goodness on top. And as of recently, you are able to play online with other players as well, driving in a convoy, talking to each other over the in-game CB radios. You know, sometimes I'm just not in the mood for racing or rallying, but just want to drive about. Well, American Truck Simulator offers me the perfect solution for just such an occasion. I can just load up the game, select my favorite country life radio station, and start driving my big rig across the 11 US states that are currently available. Remember when I said there was one game that filled the content void left behind by ACC? Well, at number 2 we find that title, Assetto Corsa. AC was developed by the same studio behind Assetto Corsa Competizione several years before the latter got released. I always describe this game as the Gran Turismo for PC. The game has a wide variety of classic and modern vehicles, ranging from road cars to open wheelers, GT races, prototypes, touring cars, rally cars, drift machines and track day cars. It also has 19 circuits or tracks, some of which have multiple configurations. The handling is more than decent and so are the graphics and audio. However, as many of you will know, all of this is dwarfed by one thing and one thing alone. It's accessible modding. And my goodness the modding community blew AC's door off its hinges. The vast amount of modded content available is absolutely mind blowing. I'll just give you 3 statistics just to show you how insane this is. All of these numbers are related to content created by the community alone. There are over 1000 tracks ranging from race circuits to public roads for free roaming, rally stages, drag strips, hill climb tracks and drift circuits. There are also over 1000 different cars, from the latest hypercar to pre-World War II machinery, from the most well-known race cars to the most unique and exclusive ones. Whatever you fancy, it is there for you. And last but not least, there are over 12,000 liveries. 12,000! That's absolutely insane! And that specific number is just from the race department website alone. There are plenty of designers that don't release their liveries on that page, but use their own websites instead. It really doesn't matter what I'm in the mood for, AC will cater to it. I can drive my very own car, a VW Scirocco, on the roads very similar to those in the area where I live, or jump into one of my all-time favorite road cars, the Subaru Impreza 22B STI, and enjoy the countryside. If I want to relive my US road trip, I can drive on Californian roads in a Cadillac Escalade or an iconic 1969 Camaro Z28. Sometimes I just want to cruise through the Italian Alps in a rare classic car such as the Alfa Romeo 33 Stradale or feel the rush of flooring the throttle in a Bugatti Chiron Black Edition. Perhaps I'm in the mood to be a rally driver and test out the Toyota Yaris GR4 RC on gravel, or jump into an actual rally car like the current gen Hyundai i20 WRC. Thanks to the time multiplier I can replicate the 24 hours of spa francorchamps from 2004 or the 24 hours of Le Mans from 1998 in 24 minutes. I'm also able to organize a virtual Goodwood Festival of Speed and get behind the wheel of a Bentley 4.5 litre blower GP, a Porsche 962C short tail, an Alfa Romeo 6C 2500 Corsa Touring Coupe from 1939, a BMW 3.0 CSL Homage R or any of the other cars available. At this very moment I have 788 different cars installed, many of which I haven't even been able to try out, and 148 tracks. 
There are so many occasions where I'm spending more time trying to figure out what I'll drive instead of actually driving. And sometimes all I want to do is scroll through the list of cars, load some of them up in the showroom and just marvel at them whilst they rotate. Assetto Corsa is an absolute gem of a driving sim and I honestly can't wait for the announcement of Assetto Corsa 2, something which is bound to happen at some point. And at number 1, not entirely unexpected, Dirt Rally 2.0. Developed by the Dirt Rally team within Codemasters and released in 2019, Dirt Rally 2.0 provides a great rally and rallycross experience. The game has 56 rally cars as well as 25 rallycross cars, ranging from the classic mini to the most modern machinery. It also has 13 rally locations with 12 stages each and 13 rallycross tracks. Dirt Rally 2.0 looks great, sounds absolutely fantastic and it has a good physics and tire model, especially on gravel. Now there are so many reasons why this game finds itself at the top of my list. First and foremost, I'm a rally fan and each time I play Dirt Rally 2.0 I'm having lots of fun. I've put in over a thousand hours of playtime into it which clearly proves that point. Secondly, it's because of this title that I began exploring graphical design. I wasn't happy at all with the liveries available for the cars and decided to teach myself how to make custom designs. I eventually took another leap and started this YouTube channel as well. If it weren't for this game none of you would be able to tell me whether you like or perhaps hate my content. I've been designing liveries and creating video content ever since, something most people seem to enjoy, which leads me to my next reason, the community. Through the Rally 2.0 I met several great people I now consider friends such as Timothy Mabbitt, Kun Hemelare, just to name a few. Some of them are even real life rally stars like Joachim Wahemans, Chris Ingram or John Armstrong, people I never thought I would meet but now talk to from time to time. There are several I initially saw as true rivals such as Daniel Johansson, Jared Pesch, Luca Giacomin, Crispin Handel and several others. However, over time quite a few of those turned into friendly rivalries. And that creates a perfect segue for my following point, online rallying. Dirt Rally 2.0 has a fantastic range of online competitions organized by both the developers and the community. Since 2019 I've improved my driving skills considerably to the point where I could actually battle it out with the best in the business. I entered the Solberg World Cup and finished 12th out of over 16,000 drivers. I also competed in the John Armstrong Thrustmaster Championship, finished in 2nd place, if you don't count John himself, and won a Thrustmaster DSS handbrake. But my biggest accomplishment by a mile was qualifying for the Dirt Rally World Series quarterfinals and eventually pushing through to the semi-finals where I finished 4th. I've had many great successes but also several disappointing losses playing Dirt Rally 2.0. The game and the community pushed me to become a better driver and content creator. But most important of all, both have been helping me get through some difficult times and cope with some intense personal struggles. And that's why I'll forever be grateful to Dirt Rally 2.0 as a game, the community as a whole and a dozen people in specific. I believe that me saying you have my eternal gratitude is the perfect way to end this video. I hope you enjoyed it and if that is indeed the case, feel free to leave a like. If you want to see more of our content in the future, consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell. It helps the channel out quite a lot. Thank you very much for watching, good luck and goodbye.